Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Zardy B, and today I'm just gonna do a very quick Splatoon 2 update video. A very important topic for a lot of people that play the game, whether you're a casual or competitive player, is the discussion on gear. More specifically, gear abilities. Gear abilities are a major factor in Splatoon as they affect how players can perform certain functions, like running and swimming faster, recovering ink faster, charging their specials faster, spawning quicker, and lots more. Well, the devs of Splatoon have just given us an update on this particular topic. I spotted it first on Splatoon Japan's Twitter over here with the last two tweets, uh, but I was able to find a translated version on the official Splatoon Tumblr. And uh, it says the following. Let's take a moment to look at gear and its roles in the Inkling world. Gear is divided into three types, headgear, clothing, and footwear. From our observations, the gear sold at shops in Inkopolis Square keeps pace with the ever-changing world of squid fashion. So we're gonna get the same stuff. We're gonna get headgear, clothing, and footwear, kind of like, you know, the same system that Splatoon 1 has, but it's just gonna be all new gear. So hopefully that looks really cool. But then it continues on here, which gives us a lot more juicy information. And it says, each piece of gear comes with gear abilities that provide a variety of benefits during battle. Using a piece of gear repeatedly will increase the number of abilities it has. Our research has also revealed that gear abilities have changed along with fashion over the last two years, with a number of new abilities joining some time-tested favorites. So if that's a little too much information at the same time, here's the general summary. Using gear over time will be the new way to add more ability slots to it, as opposed to buying more slots from Spike like in Splatoon 1. Some of the abilities from Splatoon 1 that are transitioning into Splatoon 2 will be slightly changed. New abilities will be introduced in Splatoon 2. And lastly, they're going to add a lot more new gear. I think the system change in how slots are added will be very interesting. Uh, really, I think it's just going to avoid the whole grind for money to buy more slots concept and simply encourage time output to make a piece of gear better. The only thing that makes this seem a bit odd is that even though it may be a different system, the change isn't that much other than the lack of money needed. Since in Splatoon 1, gear slots could be added, but the perks were unknown until you gained experience with the equipped gear anyway, forcing you to still commit time to earning those abilities. Returning abilities is going to be both really good news for some people and will break the hearts of others. Based on the image they provided, it looks like things such as ink recovery, run speed, swim speed, ink saver, sub saver, comeback, quick super jump, special charge up, and a lot more perks will be returning. Uh, what's very intriguing about this image is two things here. The first being the ink resistance icon. It seems to have new colors. I don't know if this is just in the spirit of design change for Splatoon 2, or if it means that ability will be altered, or maybe if that's one of the entirely new abilities in general. Personally, I think it might just be a design change, but we don't have enough information at the moment to say for sure. The second thing being this ability right over here. It's cut off by the edge of the image, but it looks like an entirely new ability at first glance. I don't recall any ability from Splatoon 1 that resembles a squid with the opposing team's ink splattered on its head, but for now, that's what I can make of it. If I were to take a wild guess, maybe it would allow squids to potentially swim in opposing ink for a little bit more time before being forced into kid form again. Uh, I don't know for certain how fair or unfair that could make things, but again, we're just going off a whim here. If you have any predictions as to what it could be, let me know down in the comments. Lastly, the final point to be covered is the new gear in general. Before this update, they showed some of the new gear that we'd be seeing later on in either a future test fire or just in the full game. Either or, they look pretty sweet. There's a lot of cool looking headgear, shirts, and shoes. And regarding pants that wasn't really customizable in Splatoon 1, characters aren't limited to just shorts. It seems like they can wear pants as well, so that's pretty awesome for those that really care about how fresh they appear both in-game and in Ingopolis Square. That's going to be it for this quick update. If you enjoyed the video, please drop a like and a comment below, that'd be awesome. And if you're feeling a bit generous, please do drop a sub, that would be swell. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.